Adobe Audition is a very intimidating program when you look at it, but if you break it down into very small parts, it's actually not that difficult to figure out, all right? So, I mean, it might sound basic and it might sound like you don't need to know this, but if you break this screen down, there's not that much going. There's a lot of things happening, but they're all happening individually. You got your timer over here, right? This tells you how long you've been going for. Just keep an eye on this at all times. And if you, it doesn't come up, just go to a window and find it. See what I'm saying? If something's on that looks confusing to you, come up to the window and turn it off. Uh, we don't need markers. It's gone. See what I'm saying? So you just pull up the screens that you need. You know, history, you don't need history. Turn that off. You know? Effects, you don't need that either. You need files. You need playlist. You need selection. You need time, you need levels. Alright? That's awesome. So you simplify it. Yeah, you yeah, clean simplify the screen so that you it's yeah. function where you need it. Right? Just what you need to look at is all that you need to see on the screen. And if, and if you need to find something, well, where's the one? Under Windows, you said? Where's the one? Yeah. Click Windows. Figure out whichever one you need. Now, sometimes you'll see that on the screen with all the yellow and red lines. You need to get rid of that one immediately. Well, I always see that one. That's not a, what? That's not just not important. But it's something else later on it might be. I mean, that's next level stuff. Right. You know, if you want to go with next level stuff, that's fine. But you don't need a screen with 75 windows on it, make, looking at, making it look all intimidating. Just what you need. You need to know how long you've been going. You need to know how long it is, the whole thing is. You need to know your levels. You need to know your files. Everything else is huh. cluttering up your screen and making this program look so much more intimidating than it really is. Okay. okay. I like that. I like that approach. Okay. So the, oh, hey now. No. So this is not a movie. <laughs> the next thing you need to know is the most important thing when you're in this class is where are you saving your file to? Yes. Okay. You don't want to open up your file. You're you open up your folder and what do you see? Untitled session 75 times and you gotta click every one of them to figure out which assignment's yours. Every time this box pops up. Change that to something specific to your program. Right. That way you know exactly what file you're using. You know, that way you don't have to look through 86 untitled one, untitled two, untitled three, untitled four. You might have 18 files that say untitled one because you can't take three seconds to type, you know, audition class. Now you know exactly what's on that file. And I mean, you can break it down. Sometimes, like if you're doing a concert spot, you'll have seven audit voice tracks from yourself. Literally name it. Uh, voice track number six. Concert spot voice one, concert spot voice two, concert right. spot voice three. Now you know exactly which clip is which one. Right. You can even, if, you, if you're at real high speed, you can name who, concert spot who what, concert spot where, concert spot price. Then you know exactly what's going on. Okay. And you're okay, that's when this pops up and everything comes around. Okay, so there's two ways to get audio into this program. All right, the first way, obviously, you click the uh, record button and then talk into the microphone. Okay, the second way to do it, file, open. And then go to your folder. Where did you save the song? Where did you save the audio clip? You know? Uh, I need to go back one more. You can master like that too. And that puts you where you're, you're grabbing it and knowing where you're grabbing it. And be All these people try to like click on the folder, drag it on, and then it doesn't work and they're like, I can't figure out how to do it. Don't do that. File, open, find folder on the system. Okay? Now you gotta remember. If you put a flash drive in the computer to pull a song off here, you have to put the flash drive on 
onto your into your student folder and then pull it from your student folder into here. Because once you pull the flash drive out, Audition is not going to know where the file's at. And it's just going to be a big blank spot in the middle of your screen. You see what I'm saying? So everything you put in here needs to have, what's the word I'm looking for? A source, a source file. Where is it saved in the system? So it knows where to look for it every time. Okay, a lot of times people can't find files too um, because they decided that they were going to be high speed and they were going to reorganize their names or their folders. So they took a file and moved it to a different folder because they wanted to organize themselves. Now the system doesn't know where it's at anymore. Uh, yeah, I know it's your time. Uh, you know? be and then everybody's like, I can't find what I saved. I can't find what I saved. You move stuff around. Don't touch it. Save it one time. You move it around. So the key is when you open this, once again now, name it every time. This button is your friend. Right. Yeah. No matter what. Even if you are absolutely positive that it's right, always it again. browse. Find the exact place that you want this to save to every single time. Take, it might take five extra seconds, but uh, it'll save your butt. <laughs> it'll make your life so much easier. Especially in this school. Well, mm -hmm. use your computer, it'd be kind of well, honey. But, yeah, I mean, can I, I've seen people, like, people save part. stuff in my folder. I'm like, how do you guys even yeah, get yeah, into my folder to save it? Yeah. Like, what they did was, they didn't change the destination. Exactly. So exactly. you stop, you come out, it's going to assume you want to save it in the same place every they should time. Be, they should have a, a way you can log out, just like you can do on Google or something. But like the computer's like, going to go back, back to the exact same, same place that it was before. Google, Google did the same thing, you got to sign. But no, you sign out, right? But you can't sign out on those. It would be the last person to browse. It would be their fucking mm -hmm. All right. Don't worry about any of this. 44, 100, float, stereo. That all stays the same. Don't touch any of that. Oh, I think I just gave the first F bomb for this series. Dang it. Okay. All right. So you got that. Now you want to save. Save what you're doing. Every time, save. You can't hit save enough, okay? Because you still have to save two times. You have to save this screen, and that isn't saving any MP3s. That's saving where you're placing the MP3 on the timeline. So, so it has to be mixed down before you can save it. Save it, right? So. There you go. If you saved the session here, it would start this file at the zero second. Then you move it here, save it again. Now it's saving start this file at the at the 10 second mark. Okay? This isn't saving your MP3. You're not going to turn this in. All this is doing is saving where you where you put it on the timeline. Right? Start this file at the zero, start this file at the 10 seconds. That's all that you're saving here. Okay? Then you have to, you move this to here. Even if you move this from here to here, you have to save it again because it wants to know where things are. Then when you mix it down into this folder, save it again. This, this is what you're turning into your, your teacher. This is what we, the MP3 finale after you mix it down, and I'll go over mix it down later. Okay, so then you save again, and then this one is what you will turn in. No, we the teachers don't care about your session folder unless there's some kind of huge mess up in your thing. Then we'll go into the session folder and look. They just want the MP3, but the MP3 is not going to save until you save the multi-track session. Right. Okay. <clears throat> okay, some of the keys when you're recording, I've noticed a lot of people take like three hours to make a 30 second commercial, right? Mm -hmm. Because what happens? Right. Right. You, start, you start talking, you mess up, 
you stop it, you delete it, and you start over from the beginning. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, where, where, where? Then you mess up again, you stop it, you delete it, you start over from the beginning. Yeah. If you're going to record a commercial, you're going to record anything. You hit record one time, until you have said every word perfectly, then you move on. Okay? But you don't, you don't have to even go back to the beginning, right? Like on this, like I started, like I have it. Beginning commercial in three, two, one. Downtown Wilkie remains alive with the entertainment and fun all summer. Um, visit the outdoor market every Saturday from 8 until noon with fresh fruits, vegetables, flower, vet, fresh. You see how I went, I didn't go back to the beginning. I didn't have to. This is perfect. So. With fresh fruits, vegetables, flour. My bread, mistakes aren't there. Just go back to the last place that was good. Flowers. Say it again. And a variety of delicious goods. Okay. Because you can just. This wasn't good. Get rid of this. And get rid of that. And then it just flows perfectly again. See what I'm saying? So there's no reason to stop and restart everything you do. You hit it one time. Now you'd be surprised. Like I will get an email of like um, the Bearcat Report, right? And it'll be Dan Ward interviewing Mick Cronin. And it will literally sound like this. Interview starts in three, two, one. We're here at Fifth Third Arena. Oh my God, I'm so stupid. We're, we're here at BB&T Arena, not for, you know what I mean? Oh my God, oh my God. Will you shut up in the background? I'm trying to record here. Okay, let's start this over again. We're here at BB&T Arena interviewing Mick Cronin after the, uh, Wichita State win in the good game. No, uh, after they beat Wichita, after they beat Wichita State in a great win, you know. And then you just sit there and you just take out everything you don't need. Oh, you got to do that. Okay. Yeah. So it's oh wow. There's a lot more humanity to it than uh, people really think. Mm -hmm. uh, well, that, and then you just mix it down, cut out all the mistakes, cut out the dude yelling the cuss word in the background. You know, like that's just what you. That's the part of it. Like that's just what you can have a job. You know? Yeah, you just delete the stuff you don't need. Oh, yeah, right. Go fine. through. Obviously, you would delete the right. interviews. Beginning commercial in three, two, one. Down. You would absolutely get rid of that front part. You don't need it. But you need to tell the person who's editing it, this is the beginning. You know? Then you go through. Keep talking. Don't stop the recording for any reason. Huh. Like, even if... You're in a studio recording a commercial, and I open the door and I'm like, hey man, you need any help? Don't stop the recording. Just be like, no, I'm good. And as soon as I close the door back, go back to the last point that was good, start talking again. It saves, saves people so much time if you just let it roll the whole time. Eventually, you will, uh, you'll have everything you need and you can just delete everything you don't. I mean, even if you sound perfectly, sometimes when I'm recording, I'll even say it again. You know, it, I could say it better, you know. Uh, Cincinnati beat Wichita State on a great play at the end of the game. Wichita State lost Cincinnati. Uh, Cincinnati beat Wichita State. Cincinnati beat Wichita State. Cincinnati beat Wichita State. You say it three or four times the right way you want it, move on to the next sentence. Just delete everything you don't need. That will save people so much time. And you don't have to spend three hours doing a 30 second commercial. You'll get it done in seven minutes, eight minutes. Okay. But here's the problem with that. All right. A lot of people will just go in and start deleting stuff. Right? Don't want this. I don't want this. I don't want this. Let me delete everything. That's always, not always necessarily the right answer. Okay? Because like, as you see right here, I'm, I'm talking. It's going to be entertainment and fun all summer. Um, visit the I need to get rid of that um, right? If you would delete everything from the um, to everything up to, you know, in the middle of these two clips, it will run together. It's alive with the entertainment and fun all summer. Visit the album. And it will sound like you don't have to breathe. And it'll be like that doesn't sound exactly right to me because a human, they might not understand why it doesn't sound right, but they will know something sounds wrong because you're used to people pausing when they talk to take a breath. 
You know? So instead of doing that, you would highlight it. Go up here to where it says effects and press silence. That just immediately takes all the sound away. So now the gap oh. where you breathe is still in there. All but you don't hear it now. It so now you can tell this, that you're breathing, but you don't hear the in the effects in the middle. Silence and a variety of delicious goods. Yes. It is effects silence. Dude, and see now Jason and Todd is we just take the bubble out. Right. Well see that's the thing. Like right here. I put another one right here. Right? Sounds of Willoughby and face value. Big breath right there. You see that sound, right? You can delete the bubbles. No, he was saying he would always say, go on one side of the bubble and the other side of it, right. so catch a little piece of it. You delete the bubbles, but then it doesn't sound like it sounds like you're not Believe breathing. And face value. See the cities. I see all the sound like a human's talking. Right. Right. So go in and just silence. It. Silence the bubble. Sounds of Willoughby and face value. You're talking still. You see see the cities. Now, the pause for your breath is there. People won't think it sounds weird, but you don't hear a big in the room. You might not want it so big, though. That's kind of a big pause. Well, yeah, I mean, you can nitpick that down a little bit, yes. Okay, any questions on how, how, what I'm talking, what, how that works? Okay, cool. That's fucking awesome. Okay, so the next step, after you've recorded your seven minute MP3 that's going to be broken down in 30 seconds, you've condensed everything that you need into just what you want to say. It's all timed out right. If you're listening... Other Thursday night family concerts feature Don right. Dismantis. You can do two things that make your voice pop out of the speakers more. Okay? First thing you do is I like to do the dynamics process. And then hit you know, you know, the get that again? Okay, so okay. under effects, under effects, amplitude and compression, amplitude. the dynamics process, the compander, right here, compander okay. with this arc. What it's going to do is it's going to take the the high peaks and the low peaks. It's going to even them out. Right. So as soon as I hit apply, watch how everything about. evens out. See, that's all even now. Okay? So that's then, better than the normalizing. Well, you still have to do that, so that's next. Then you go to effects, normalize. Okay? Just barely under 100. Don't put it at 100. But just barely under 100. Because if you put 100, that's 100% volume. You don't want 100% volume. You want to be able to manipulate it. Once it goes to 100, you can't get it back. You have to, you know, you want to be able to move it up and down. You still want those peaks. So just barely under 100, 98, 97, 96. And then make sure that normalize all channels equally is also clicked. There you go. Now, now your voice pops out of the, out of the speaker. Other Thursday night family concerts feature Don Dismantis, you see what I'm saying? Mary Taylor Brooks, mm, hey, software live, uh, song recorded to it. Say again? Song record, not that. Like music record. Oh, uh, is there a music? Seven. No, I'm Design. saying like for music record. Is that software? That's for radio. This is for voice. You can add music to it. Do not put the effects that I just showed you onto a song. Uh, right. Those are just for voice. Okay. okay. And we'll put a song under this in a second. But do you notice the difference how the how and just the voice just Mary Taylor Brooks right mm, contraband. Okay. There's this. There's this little um in here. Taylor Brooks. Mm. Okay. So this thing right here. This is your zoom in and out. Okay. So you can get really technical with this. You want to get rid of this um right here. You can go. I mean, all the way to like, like, like milliseconds. 
this is point 39.45 seconds, 39.5 seconds, 39.55. You can go all the way to like even farther than that if you want to get specific like perfectness if you're that attention to detail. But like I said, that much attention to detail may make you sound like you're not a human. Have you ever heard that recording where the person's talking and it sounds like they're not breathing? They're not. It's just like a machine, like a robot. You can tell it's a human voice, but it just seems like a robot. Uh, we have a late comer. She's coming in, but I just want to let you know. Okay. Are we accepting late comers? So, of course we are. His teeth. So then, after you've done all this editing, right? Right click, insert it in the multi track. Click on the name, the one you named. Never, well, I mean, unless it's the first time, then you can, the only option is new, but then you would name it something, right? Click on the one that you've named, puts it in the, in the session. We'll get rid of the two that I don't need. Oh, yes, you should have ready. Okay. Yeah. So then you need a song. Let's put a song right underneath this. Okay. So file, open, find a song, and I don't exactly know where a song is. So you want to pull a song out of my file? Oh, all right, cool. There's a song in your file. Yeah, I got a bunch. So go uh, to the students, students uh, 2017. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> students. October 9th. 17, October 9th. Uh, really, yeah, that one. And then James Parker 3. And then uh, yeah, you, can go, you, can go songs, you can go songs for Balanced Tower. Alright, so whatever. click yeah. open. Right click, multi track. That's the way you put it on there? You don't put it on there the other way? What? Where you just slide it on? Yeah, well, a lot of times that doesn't work. That works every time. Open, click the file, and once you lose it, you, you lose your stuff, so now you won't lose it, will you? Mm -hmm. yeah. So now you're playing, right? Yeah, no, it will be remaining live. That, that music, music is just live. so in the way, right? Yeah, yeah you can know. do it the long way. Oh, I'll talk about like an instrumental. <laughs> that is an instrumental. Uh, where? All oh, that will be in the tree. It's a, uh, uh, I believe it's a, an Aerosmith song, Mary? Oh, that song isn't actually. No, it's a um, hip hop. Uh, open song, song. Where's your song there? Oh, a song is just a song that's under Balanced Hour. Songs for Balanced Hour. Uh, my song music Here we go. Yeah. It's a new multi track. Alright. So, the music's too loud for the voice. You can go in to each file if you want to do it the long way, raise the volume of your voice, lower the volume of your song. That takes way too long. Yeah, that will be remain the line. See this yellow line right here? Delicious goods. Last time will be arrived August 17th. Until you get the until you get the, the mix that sounds good. Downtown will be remains alive as you hear the, the voice all summer. The music's in the background. This is the outdoor market every Saturday from 8 until okay. noon. Fresh fruits, vegetables, flowers. Okay. So. But uh we don't want to hear Snoop rapping on this, right? right? We just want his voice. Okay, yeah. Alright, so you go in and find where is he going to start rapping at. Okay. Okay, so this button, these buttons right here, you can hit this M right here. Mm -hmm. It's not going to play this, it's only going to play this one. You wait and you find it. So right here is where he starts. Right? Dang it. Do we 
that say? Right here is where it starts saying. So then go up here to this razor blade right here. Go where? This razor blade up at the top oh, of the screen. Okay, razor blade, yeah. All right. Cut. Go up to this arrow. Delete it. All right, so now it's just the intro. Yeah. <laughs> Back and back. So, before you do this next step, make sure the volume is correct because it's going to copy the volume level and then you'd have to go through and fix it every time, right? Right click, loop. Oh, yeah. No, nope. it should be loop duplicate. Loop, and then what's the second part? It should be loop. <laughs> Interesting. Oh, where for it? Maybe it does it on cool edit. Maybe you can open it up and then and then another one. Or you know, you just cop double click on it and then do it right there. Oh, there it is. But, the, but when you copy and paste, isn't there always like just like a little bit of like a skip when you put them together? We'll, we'll fix that. Paste. Paste. They're underneath each other when you paste them like that. and so on and so forth until you get the, the song lined out. But like you just said, there's going to be a little skip to where the beginning is. But if you put them just a, just a little bit underneath each other? <laughs> so just match the up to down beats, right? To the drum. Match the drum line. You see what I'm going for there? Matching the up and down beats of the song so that the, the track just keeps going on and on and on. Right, right. I, but when you overlap them, it's not going to play both. It is playing both at the same time. Mm -hmm. But you start the one over the other one, the other one just dies out immediately and you're on to the next one. Oh, okay. So we'll, we're going to shorten this up for a second. featuring a special Erie Grass concert at West Point Gazebo Park. You can pretty much just mess with it all you want until you get um, everything that you need, you know, the whole music going out the whole way. All right, so take these little lines, do the quick, simple mix, where you raise the volume of your voice 
lower the volume of the music just with these yellow lines right here. Okay? But sometimes you do want to play the song. Machines Man or talk 
very slowly. So I'll, I'll, I'll show you some of this. This is, where do I find the drone one? Perfect. So, effects, time and pitch. Time and pitch. Alright. You hit play, and it'll. Last stop will be arrived August 17th. Over again. Last stop will be arrived August 17th. Last stop will be arrived August 17th. Last stop will be arrived August 17th. Last stop, last stop will be arrived August 17th. Last stop will be arrived August 17th. Last stop, last stop will be arrived August 17th. Last stop will be arrived August 17th. Last stop, last stop will be arrived August 17th. Last stop will be arrived August 17th. Last, last stop will be arrived August 17th. Last stop will be arrived. Or the other way, helium. Now you're Alvin and the Chipmunks. Last stop will be arrived August 17th. Last stop will be arrived August Yeah, dude, you can be like, whoop it to the left, whoop it to the right of the pizza, that you, you. Rock me, man, rush it. Four. Last stop will be arrived August 17th. Last stop will be arrived August And you can absolutely do Darth Vader. And then go in. Because each time you add an effect, you're adding an effect to something you've already changed. Do you see what I'm saying? So make sure you do it in the order that sounds good. Because if you, like I said, if you do delay and then Darth Vader, it's going to sound different than doing Darth Vader and then delay. Okay? Yeah. So my question is, say somebody do music, right? Uh -huh. But they want to use their voice, but then in like... I guess the background, like how you do Alvin and the ones and stuff like that, mm -hmm. is there a way you could do that? Sure. What you would do is, you'd come here to multi-track, right? Copy, paste. Now you have just this little bitty bitty bit right here. You're going to put that, the effect on while your main one stays the same. You see what I'm saying? Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, if you want to do like layers like that, you just keep keep doing it over and over again. Now you can do your voice, go in here, make this Darth Vader. Because you know how some people, they... Right, and then you go in here, you make this Alvin. So you'll have regular voice, Darth Vader, and Alvin all at one time.
Because some people, you know, some people need one another that kind of stuff. So. so, when you're all done, everything on the screen is the way it is. Um, click on this multi track, hit mix down the new file, click entire session, and you've got your MP3 that you turned in with all the effects that we changed. But remember, you have to save this. As soon as it pops up, save it. Because you can go back to it later. But if you pull it up and then go away without saving it, you have to mix it down again. Okay? okay. It's going to sound bad because it's all kinds of crazy in there. I'm not going to play it. It'll just be noise. Okay. So, save it twice. Now, Say you talked 37 seconds, and it's only supposed to be 30, right? You can go in and delete something, okay? You can also move this bar right here that says stretch. How did you get to that? Is that an effect again? It's in effects. It's under time of pitch where uh, dark fader is. Okay. Now, when you do this, oh wow, this is going to take 20 minutes. I'm going to stop it. It's going to take 20 minutes to do it. <laughs> wow. But, uh, but uh, when you do it, it takes what you have and makes it longer or shorter. Okay? Now, the thing is, if you do that, it may alter the sound of your voice. Okay, so you have to watch that. But for the most part, you can make it shorter and squeeze everything in. All right, are there any specific questions that y'all have about it? Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> I got an error message saying that something was not readable when I tried to save it. Okay. After having. Uh, I had an IE show me how to transfer a music file into Audition to use it. And then once I tried to save that, I don't know if it was a format or if he didn't. Okay, so the problem, did you put, did you have the music on a flash drive? No, it was from YouTube. Okay. It was converted. That, okay, so what happens is you have to save the file and make sure that it's in a specific spot because you do it, and then it's trying to read it, and it's like, I don't, I don't know where the file is. The, the, the audition file folder can't find the source of what you're looking for. Okay. So every time that you try to put a song in, uh -huh. before you load it in the audition, right? That makes sense. Okay. Take the MP3 you want to put in there, mm -hmm. put it in your folder. Okay. So now it knows, the, the program knows exactly where that file is and can go to it every time. Okay. But what also could have happened is you could have saved it there, loaded it into Audition, and then moved it in your folder to a different folder. And then it didn't know where to look for this folder anymore and it would say read it. Okay, that makes sense too. Okay. That makes sense. So I don't know which one it was, one of those two things. Okay. But basically, Audition needs to know where the source of the full file okay. is. Okay. Okay, so like if you have songs on a flash drive, you have to save them into your folder first right. and then load them into Audition. If you do it the other way, it might end up being a blank somewhere. Okay. Or if you're pulling them right from the uh, flash drive uh -huh. into Audition, then you pull the flash drive out, it's going to have nothing. This is going to be a big blank spot in the middle of your, right. middle of your, middle of your MP3. Okay. Okay. I think I pretty much covered all of the basics that you need for this program. Um, like I said, any, uh, anything else? Any other questions that you guys are having problems with? The, I'm sorry, the, um, when you got the yellow dot to go in and change your volume mm -hmm. to whatever you wanted to do to that track, did you just specifically 
just tap that area where you wanted that dot, or was there something that you went to a tab to bring it up? Okay, so let's start this. All the dots are gone now. right here you got your yellow volume line here okay okay you can move it as a whole up and down and it changes the volume of the entire thing okay or you can place one dot anywhere you want you don't need to click on anything you don't need to like arm it or anything okay you just click the dot right there and then grab it some anywhere else Okay, so you just grab a whole thing, the volume line, basically. Yep. Okay. You got to put the anchor dot down anywhere on it where you want the, the volume to change. Okay. And then, like, even if you want the volume to start over here, it, it'll automatically switch for you. Oh, okay. I got you. See what I'm saying? Yeah. If you make a mistake, click on the dot, pull it off. Okay. All right. Like, gotcha. Thank you. like when we're mixing the songs together, you know, you don't have to go in to the song. You just do a simple mix like that. It'll fix it. Out. Instead of going in every time, going in and lowering the volume on that and then lowering, raising your volume, just simply mix it. Now there's another line here too. It's the blue line. And that is the line that pans your left and right tracks. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you can also, you know, how like. Oh, that's what I was looking. Okay, sorry. So like, um, let's see here. There's a Led Zeppelin song where it goes from one speaker to the other speaker, back and forth to the other speaker. You know. This is the this is the right. This is the left. Now left right one hundred left zero. left 100, right 0, mm -hmm. and it goes back, and it will only play from that one speaker. Well, just a sec. Now, if you get some like really like yeah, that's where that's turn like like high speed songs mm -hmm. where like you, you see it a lot in a rock song where the vocals and the lead guitar will be on the right mm -hmm. and the bass and the drum will be on the left. Mm -hmm. So you can just completely drop the entire bass and drum out and just go with the vocals, or drop the entire vocals out and just hit the bass and the drums. Mm -hmm. Makes sense. And you can pan back and forth between the two sides. Look at this. This is a beat button right here. This means while you're playing it, it won't play anything on this track. So if 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 you're sitting here, it's like you just want to hear the song. But Other you, Thursday night, you can't because your voice is in the way. You can't hear what's going on in the song. You click that mute button. Now it's just a song. Okay. Now, say you've got six tracks going at one time, and all you want to hear is just this one, just the song one, hit the S. That means solo, and that means it mutes everything on the screen except for the one that you want to play. And the solo is the one that you selected? Yeah, so, so it will select? play this one because I click solo here, Okay. and it won't play anything else on the entire screen. Or you can just mute the one and it will just play 
it won't play this and it will play everything else on the screen. Okay? That's when you get more close and technical with it. The R is armed for record. Alright? I do not suggest recording in this mode. Every time you want to record your voice, come back to this screen. Okay? Come back to the waveform screen. Alright? If, if the red R is, is highlighted, it will record over what's on this track. Hmm. Okay? And it will also record this onto that track as well. So, every time you record from the board from the microphone, you want to be here, you want to be in this screen. Do it individually. So that you don't, you know. So how do you start over in the track? You delete that and press delete. Nope, you don't need to. File, new, file. Oh, uh, I did. Mm -hmm. That's what I started doing. Or you can hit control shift N for new. Okay? Which reminds me, here are some uh, notes like new to put on a mixing thing. To put over to mix thing. Or so this is mix and to put over to waveform. I mean, you know what I'm saying. So that's how you put it. You delete Your that. waveform, you hit file new. Alright, and then record something else, then put a layer over to Name it something. Always name it something, every time. Second audition class. Brand new. Record something new. Okay. There were a lot of hotkeys on this keyboard that will make your life a, a lot easier. Okay. If you mess up, Control Z deletes what you just messed up, goes back. So undo. Control Z is undo. Okay. Control W is close. Just this screen. So, like I said, you got this, and you got this, and you got this, and you got this. We don't need this one anymore. Control W. That's gone. You don't need to worry about it anymore. It's gone. You need it back? Control Z. And it came back over there. You have to drag it back into the system though. Okay? Um, those, those are pretty much the only two you'll need. There's about ten more, but those are the only ones that I ever use. Control Q closes the whole program down. Do not hit Control Q. Because then you lose everything on your screen, and if you didn't save, it's gone. Ooh. Control W and Control Z Q are right next to each other. Control W does close. Control W closes just the file in this screen. Control oh, Q. Okay. Control Q closes the entire program down, whether you saved or not. It's all gone. So don't mess that up. Don't do that in the darkest. Because that's not undoable because now Adobe Audition isn't running if you hit Control Q. You can't undo that. So don't mess those two up. Okay, another thing that you'd like to know is these buttons down here. This green button, if you have that highlighted, when it's done, when it plays with it, it'll, it'll play 2013 events at willoughbyohio.com. Beginning. Automatically it starts back over at the beginning. If it's not highlighted, it stops when it's done. Okay? Now, here's a little thing. If you just hit the space bar, last stop will, last stop will, last stop will be arrives August 17th featuring a special Erie Brass concert at West Point Gazebo Park. It will, it will move the screen no matter what, all right? And then if you highlight, it will only play what's highlighted. Last stop will be arrived August 17th. Over. Or, it will just repeat. What Last stop about. will be arrived August 17th. Last stop will be arrived Over August 17th. When you're in multi-track view, if you hit this little arrow with that line next to it, it goes back to the next starting point. See, it jumped right to the end here. Then you click it again, it goes 
And so say you've got, let's, let's build something here. Alright. It goes, you click this button, it goes to the next point, next stop point, then it'll go here next. Then it'll go here next. You see what I'm saying? How it goes back. You click that a bunch of times, it goes all the way back to the beginning. Or the other way with the arrow. It goes to the next starting point. Okay, instead of trying to mess with the mouse, <coughs> it just automatically shoots you where you need it to go. Okay, any more questions? Uh, other than hands-on, that's where I could do best. Yeah, I'm so much while mine about ready. I'm about to clap. You're about to what? Clap. I'm about to turn up the radio. Yeah? yeah. Did you, you, you try to wait your hand? Do you have a question? No, I'm not going to keep it. All right. Why don't you uh, head into a studio, and I will uh, wander around and uh, help you see. You guys just mess with it for a little while. Okay. Right. Now we'll just continue with the recording. <laughs> Come on, Mario. So stop recording now.